We are gonna go ahead and get started in about five minutes. But before we do, I'm actually just gonna go through some of the rules for you um, on how to play our Metro Parks trivia. Um, it is not in the Zoom. So if you are not familiar with this, what we need you to do to play is we need you to go to www.menti.com and type in the code that you see in front of you on your screen there. That's gonna be 3755. One three. Uh, to watch, follow along on the Zoom webinar on a separate device. You'll find the link in your email. You're going to want to enter the username you gave at registration. This is important, so if you do win, we know how to give you your prizes. The trivia questions will be followed by multiple choice options. Some questions are preceded by a photo. The faster you answer correctly, the more points you receive. So my advice, if you don't know, guess quick. Uh, then once you select an answer, please keep in mind, you cannot change it. The first three questions that we're going to go through are practice questions. Go ahead and answer them. There are no wrong answers. If you don't answer one of these questions, you won't get the automatic freebie points. So we are excited to have you play with us tonight. Uh, we do have some folks here that are gonna be online for you for any tech questions that you may have. Now you'll stay muted. Matt and myself are gonna be the only two that you're gonna be able to hear. Uh, but if you do need anything, go ahead, type in that chat box and our tech experts are gonna be here to help you. That's right, Shannon. Uh, thanks for those of you who participated last week in our friends and family trial run. Uh, it's nice to be back in your living rooms. And as Shannon mentioned, we've got tech support here to answer not only questions about tonight's trivia, but they can also answer questions about things around your house or potential career advice or gift giving. Uh, does this tie match these pants? Those people are online all night long, folks. Call them late, they're here for you. Uh, we are thrilled to have uh, you back in here in a time where it's difficult to find fun things to do. So we're not suggesting this is one of those things, but we're here nonetheless. And Shane and I have been sequestered for over four weeks here in Burbank Park uh, to transmit live to you uh, tonight's trivia. So we're gonna start right at seven o'clock. I do want to make mention of our sponsors here. We're certainly proud to have their support. Uh, again, Supercuts, uh, a proud sponsor. They have put together a quarantine pack, which comes with one set of scissors, one bowl, and one hammer to smash every mirror in your house with. Our second sponsor is Greg's Puzzles. They've never been more relevant. Greg's Puzzles and also Kirkland Sweatpants, the everyday wear. How about that? Thank you, Kirkland. Who knew that I could feel so bad in my clothes all the time? I'm gonna start fresh at seven o'clock. Again, the first three questions are just practice runs. So if you're not having a good time within three chances, then you probably just wanna sign off because you're not gonna have fun the rest of the time. I do wanna talk a little bit about our prizes if you're the big winner. Today we have, for first place winners, a $100 gift certificate to Souk Restaurant. Second place winner gets a uh, blanket with the Metro Parks logo on it. And third place winner gets a tumbler. And for those of you who are not very sophisticated like myself, a tumbler turns out it's a cup. That's right, it's a cup. So who knew, if, Matt? Who knew? I'll tell you who didn't, Shannon, and I didn't know. So if you've had three cups in your life this whole time, you wanted to have a fourth person over, now you maybe can. So get your answers in quick for higher points, as Shannon mentioned. And we're gonna get started here in just one minute with trivia this evening. And remember, if you're just joining us right now, please take a quick look at your screen and follow those instructions. We definitely need you to know that you have to have a separate device. You can't just play along with our Zoom webinar. So make sure you go to www.menti.com, type in 375513. Make sure you use the username that you registered with so Matt can go ahead and deliver those wonderful prizes that he was just talking about. Wouldn't that be nice to have him come to your door? That's right. We'll be dropping off your prizes to your home. Thanks for mentioning that, Shan. I also want to thank the Eagle Scouts who built the sets here for us. They had to build two so we could bring Shan in to be the voice of reason. All right, Shan, I think we're almost ready to start. The excitement is bubbling over the internet, I can tell. It is the time. comments are flashing alive, so I yes. think we're probably ready to start as it is seven o'clock, Matt. Let's get going. All right. And again, we're back with the Dave Zink band. They are. It is lovely, isn't it? 
What it's you so folks good. are going to see in front of you is as you do pop up with a username, Menti is going to go ahead and ascribe to you a beautiful character for you to follow along with. So it looks like we've got a cardinal, a bunny, a strawberry, and an engagement ring. Well, isn't that pleasant? We've got a devil face, a hopefully not a Titanic, but it does look like a ship. Uh, and we've got some feet. So just keep those coming and those are going to be your avatars that you're going to see pop up on our leaderboard so can't wait to see what names you also have oh we've got an alien a penguin a crown and a soccer ball that's right again if you've got questions please answer our tech pico they will be happy to answer all of your questions so get them in and we'll be starting here momentarily you want to get everyone a chance to get their usernames in to participate Yep. Remember, please go to that www.menti.com, enter that password so you can get your avatar and your name up on our leaderboard. Again, another public service announcement for bow tie tying. Uh, go to YouTube and then give yourself a full hour to learn how to tie that tie. It's not easy. Uh, even if you've got good fine motor skills, I think you'll find it challenging. So again, if you're tying a bow tie for a special occasion, which this certainly is, go to YouTube and give yourself a full hour to learn. All right, I think we got almost everybody in. I think it might be time to start. I am twittering with anticipation. Practice question, which of the following is your favorite Metro Park? Again, you can't lose here, so get your answers in fast. 10 seconds, all the Metro Park, Side Cut, Swan Creek Preserve, Oak Openings Preserve, Wildwood Preserve, and Pearson. So again, which one is your favorite or are all of them your favorites? All right, got a wide variety of answers. No one for Pearson. Uh, sad state affairs there for Pearson. We won't tell our colleagues that work there that you don't care. Uh, sort of an unkind statement there, but we've got an answer in. We're going to our second question. Again, you can't get these first three wrong. We're just getting a practice round in, giving time people to get in late. Which of the following is your favorite bird? Which of the following is your favorite bird? Northern Cardinal, American Robin, Eastern Bluebird, American Goldfinch, or Baltimore Oriole. Or, I like all birds if you're a coward and non-committal. Get your answers in fast, five seconds left. Here we go, folks. The fun has already started. A wide variety here. Baltimore Oriole, no one voted for that. How about that? No value for that creature whatsoever. 16 people were for Eastern Bluebird. 12 for I like all birds. All right, question number three, and this is the last of our practice round. So get those answers in fast. And again, what you're doing right now, you're going to redo momentarily. Which of the following is your favorite thing to do at a metro park? Be in nature, jogging, walking, bird watching, biking, or horseback riding? Which one of those things is your favorite? I hope it's not jogging. What a miserable activity that is. Get those answers in. All right, 19 for walking. I am with you people. Thank you. Two people for bird watching. I guess neither one of you like Orioles. All right, time to start the game. All right, and what we have in front of us right now, what you're seeing is our leaderboard. And congratulations to everybody playing along. It looked like everybody went ahead and got those three freebies for us. Now, don't worry. If you don't see your name right now on the leaderboard, it doesn't mean that you're losing. They just pick the top few. As the game continues on, you will see uh, numbers changing um, and different avatars may pop up. So right now we've got E.T., uh, uh, Paisley Park and Bad Bug Watcher as our top three. But again, don't worry. As the game progresses, we'll see some movement. Unless you're losing. All right, first question. Let's have at it. Now, these ones count, folks. From the following list, which Metro Park is the largest? From this list, which is the largest? Howard Marsh, Secor, Pearson, no one's favorite, or West Winds? Let's get those answers in. This is for all the marbles, folks. There might be a cup in your future, or if you're cold, potentially a blanket. So get your answers in. Let's see how we did. 20 people said Howard Marsh, and you are 20%, or 20 people are correct. Good for you. One person for West Winds, that's okay. You can get it back. Just answer quickly the next question. Moving forward, Shannon, I can feel the excitement reverberating through my Wi-Fi. It what, is amazing. What is the age of the oldest known lake sturgeon? 37 years, 
89 years, 152 years, or 213 years? What is the age of the oldest known lake sturgeon? So five seconds left. Remember when Katrina says, and you can't change it. 152 years old. That's right. A tough question. And those were known lake sturgeon. There's plenty of them we don't know, but we know this old one, 152 years old. All right, next question, folks. Which tree has leaves that resemble a cat face? Which tree has leaves that resemble a cat face? Or for my aunt, company. Which tree has leaves that resemble a cat face? How about it? Red maple, sassafras, sycamore, or tulip poplar. But remember, if I mispronounce something, that doesn't mean it's not the correct answer. I have a fifth grade reading level. So keep playing, folks. Get those answers in fast. Red maple, sassafras, sycamore, or tulip poplar. 21 of you are spot on. How about that? Again, a mispronunciation, I think, but still people knew the right answer. Thank you. you I just can't up. wait to see the leaderboard, Matt. Oh, and here it is. How about that? Wish granted. And we've got, uh, oh, we're going to give it a second to wait to see how the leaderboard pops up. And look at that. We've got Mark from the park taking the lead. Oh, and he's got that nice engagement ring. How about oh, that? Yeah. We got Joe Dog and Blard. Well, let's see. Laura N., White Oak, Paisley Park, E.T., keep those answers coming. You guys are still right in the race. That's right. Thank you, Shannon. Doing a great job. It's nice to have you aboard. Last week was a disaster. Warblers <laughs> well, are in our region, a world-class location to see them. What are warblers? Songbirds, eagles, snowbirds, or butterflies? Songbirds, eagles, snowbirds, or butterflies? Remember, Mark, if you want to buy that ring, you might be able to win a tumbler to trade for it. So let's get that answer in fast. Stay on top of the leaderboard. 43 of you said songbirds. What if you said a shorebird? I know that question can be a little bit tricky, one person. So if you've got a complaint, send it in. And we'll totally admit that it's a sad existence here. And Nobody I just want to remind you that once you have an answer, you cannot change it. So though we want to go quick, we want to be right. Which of the following is not a use for walnuts? Not a use for walnuts. Food, fishing bobbers, making dyes, or walnut oil. Food? Fishing bobbers, making dyes, or walnut oil. Not a use for them. 32 of you are right on. Fishing bobbers, not useful at that capacity. Seven of you said making they, dyes. That was a tricky one. Go ahead, Shan. Sorry. They make beautiful black dye and dark brown dye. Just step on them as you're walking by. You'll see. How about that? How about that? You see, we're learning. That's all we can do. Thank you, Shannon. How can you tell the difference between a male and a female eastern box turtle? How can you tell the difference between a male and a female eastern box turtle? Head shape, eye color, size of spots, or number of toes? Five seconds left. Get those answers in. Is it the head shape? Is it the eye color? Size of spot, number of toes? And the correct answer is... Eye color! Eye color, oh, Matt! We're going to have a shift on the leaderboard. I can feel it, Shin. I can't wait, but while we are, while there is some variation, male eastern box turtles tend to have bright red or orange eyes, while female eastern box turtles tend to have brown or dark red eyes. Just so we can see the difference, there's a picture there for you. How about that? Thank you, Shannon. And again, right to our leaderboard. Did Mark from the park keep his lead? Joe Dog, where did we end up? I just can't wait. Oh, and there is a shift. How about that? We've got Joe Dog now taking the lead with White Oak coming in close. Pity Pat takes number three and Bald Eagle hanging in close at number four. And Mark from the park holding steady. We mispronounced Blair's name and now they've dropped off the leaderboard. Probably not a coincidence, probably tuning into something on Netflix. Autumn Olive, Bush Honeysuckle, Barberry and Garlic Mustard are all considered what? Not just hard to pronounce, ornamental plants, trees or shrubs, invasive plants, or smelly. Autumn olive, bush honeysuckle, barbarian garlic mustard are all considered. Which one of these four? Get your answers in, folks. 32 of you guessed correctly. It's an invasive species, or invasive plant, pardon me. All right, we've got a hotly contested battle that is shaping up to be quite a trivia contest. People are fighting for the blanket. People are fighting for the gift certificate. The newest venture park hasn't even been dedicated yet. 
but the gates are open and you can access it from the road or a trail. What is its name? Wiregrass Lake, West Winds, Brookwood, or Canball Prairie? This one should be a softball, folks. Let's get those answers in. A chance for you to climb up the leaderboard. The newest Metro Park, what is its name? 22 of you have guessed correctly or answered correctly. Doing great. We are learning and we are having fun here. Everyone wants a cup in their future. This plant looks like a little umbrella and, a, and it flowers in May. And that's a great picture of it, Shan. Thanks for going out today and taking these pictures. They look way better than you said. Oh, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. This plant looks like a little umbrella and flowers in May. Get ready to punch in quickly. May apple, prickly pear cactus, blazing scar, or skunk cabbage. How about that band? It is amazing. It is. These guys are available for parties, bar mitzvahs, and ceremonies, folks. Not this year, probably, but sometime soon. 25 of you guessed May Apple. You're on the target. We're moving forward, Shan. We're having fun here. We're learning about nature and the outdoors. Next question. Oh, the leaderboard. I know. You stole my thunder. I just can't wait to see if Joe Dog and White Oak are holding strong. Oh, and White Oak, still number one. Joe Dog, Paisley Park, Bald Eagle, and Monarch. Jimmy B coming in. How about They've Jimmy got B? that Cardinal crawling right up. Mark looking for play that ring by himself. I'm sorry, Mark, and still no Blaired. When going for a bike ride, what is something you should always wear? When going for a bike ride, what is something you should always wear? A helmet? Diamond rings? Mark? Cowboy boots or jeans. What and notice spandex is not listed, so that cannot be the option we choose. That's true. Whenever you're hosting trivia, though, spandex is always worn. A helmet, all of you are right. Four or four of you are playing. I'll tell you what, helmets I wear all the time. They are a game changer. Moving forward, next question. How about that band? Which of these is not a mnemonic device related to what our three owl species say? Not a mnemonic device. Who's awake? Me too. Scree! Who cooks for you? And Winnie! Those four things are difficult for me to pronounce and talk about in an accurate way, folks. I've been practicing all week since last time we were here. What do you think? We're all across the board, Shannon. Ten of you are right. Scree is the answer. God, I hope I'm saying that right. If not, that would have been misleading. Oh, our forward. chief naturalist would be so proud right now, Matt. She's never proud. Moving forward, more pictures from Shannon. What is the state wildflower of Ohio, which can, com which can be commonly found in several metro parks? What is the state wildflower of Ohio, which can commonly be found in the metro parks? Not in our yards, I'll tell you that. At least not in mine. State wildflower of Ohio. This one should be a fast in there. Get those points going, folks. Wild geranium, blood root, yellow trout lily, great white trillium. It could be any of them. You've got to know. Get those answers in. There you go. 38 of you doing great. This music is getting us going here. I love it. Leaderboard again. Look at it. This is so wonderful because we get to keep seeing where we're at after a few questions. And judging people, something else we like to do. I love it. And congratulations, White Oak and Joe Dog still hanging on. We got Bald Eagle, Jimmy B, Paisley Park, Monarch, and Pity Pat. Nice job for the fastest there. All right, Pity Pat. On their way up. What does Mad Buck refer to? What does Mad Buck refer to? OSU football players when they lose to U of M, herd of deer, an acronym for identifying trees by branching patterns, a loose $1 bill on the trail. What's a Mad Buck, folks? Let's get those answers in. Come on, Pity Pat, you are climbing fast. 25 of you are correct, an acronym for identifying trees by branching patterns. Next question. We're moving along fast. I hope you're having fun. We're certainly having fun hosting you. How about this set? Thank you, Eagle Scouts. Took them months. What was, the speed limit? what was the speed limit on the Miami and Erie Canal to prevent erosion? Four miles per hour, 14 miles per hour, 24 miles per hour, as fast as the mules can run. If you need that converted to the metric system, folks, you're going to have to go to another show. 31. Is correct for, move for, for four miles per hour. 31 people are right. 
a challenging question, folks. No one guessed as fast as the mule can run. Good for you for not going for that red herring. Next question. We're moving right along here, folks. Get those answers in. Thank you for supporting the Metro Parks. Grim Road sand dunes are closed in May and June to help protect what? Lark sparrows, antenna waving wasps, wild lupin, dwarf dandelion. Lark sparrows, antenna waving wasps, wild lupin, or dwarf dandelion. What's the correct answer here, folks? Get your answers in fast. Time is up. Let's see how we did. 27 for Lark Sparrow. There's actually two answers we would have accepted here, and two out of four is at least 40%. So we've got two, 27 people that got it right. We've got a bit of a challenging question here. We're moving down the path, and they're a little bit more challenging. But before oh. we do move down the path, I would just like to say that we do temporarily close trails during our ground nesting season to protect these at-risk species. During May and June, ground nesting birds and insects like the lark sparrow and the antenna waving wasp have their young on the ground. These are reasons why we ask you to stay on the trails or close the trails because they are state endangered species like the lark sparrows are well camouflaged and their nests are sometimes found along the trail edges. Antenna waving wasps are locally rare, bury their larvae in burrows in the sand, which could potentially also be underfoot. And we do want to protect our rare and endangered species. Thank you, Shannon. All right, we're halfway home, folks. We're going to see where we are on the leaderboard. Shannon's going to tell you how we're doing. The people are climbing. There's been a lot of movement. The prizes are coming. They're coming to your house. We're coming tonight to your homes, and we couldn't be more excited. Next week's prizes will be comprised of things we've taken from your yards, but we're going to be here next week, every Thursday in May, to participate in Mark Park's trivia. All right, I'm hoping for a flamingo, Matt. It could Starting be in the future, one. as well as a cup. Can you imagine? Next I only week. have three. Here's our leaderboard, and does White Oak hang on? Yes, Anne answered the fastest. Congratulations for knowing about lark sparrows and our antenna waving wasp. Joe Dog, Bald Eagle, and Jimmy B is creeping back up. We have Native Plants Are Us, uh, Bad Bug Watcher, and Mark from the Park. We are still in a very close race at this point in time. That's right, it's anybody's game, especially if you get those answers in quick. So if you want to climb up the ladder, guess fast. The Canadian flag displays this leaf. Canadian flag, what leaf is on it? Red oak, box elder, sugar maple, or sycamore? Which one of these is on the Canadian flag supporting socialized medicine? Red oak, box elder, sugar maple, or sycamore? Get those answers in, folks. Time is up. 42 of you are right. All right. That band has got it tonight, don't they, Shannon? They do. I wish I could dance to it. Which is not a step in the production of cornmeal at the Isaac Ludwig Mill? Blotting, grinding, fanning, or sifting? Which one is not? Shannon, how old is that mill? That mill is actually quite old. It was one of the remaining buildings left from the town of Providence, which no longer stands. We only have four buildings left, and the Isaac Ludwig Mill happens to be one of them. All right, thank you, Shan. We gotta get those in fast because we wanna do some learning, but not a lot. That is no. our way. Mm -hmm. 29 of you were right, it's blotting. All right, moving on to the next question. Look at that guy. You don't know how hard it was for Shan to get this picture, but she spent all night taking it. Wildwood really is, what kind of rodent? Not wearing a helmet there, so they are not going to be on a bicycle soon. What kind of rodent is this, folks? Be ready if you know the answer. Get that in fast, it's time to win a cup. And it did look like rain, so he had to be ready for either rain or shine. A mouse, a beaver, a muskrat, or groundhog? What is this rodent? Let's get those answers in. Five seconds left. Again, thank you, Shan, for risking life and limb to get that picture taken. Well, when you're asking what is this rodent, here I am to help. <laughs> 37 you guess groundhog that's spot on we are going to have a tight race here i can feel it we might have to make more blankets leaderboard leaderboard here we are we can see how we're doing again hold your again white oak is the fastest we've got joe dog jimmy b bald eagle native plants for us and pity pat she comes back in all right look at this we have movement on that leaderboard keep playing 
We don't know that Pity Pat is a woman. It is an asexual name. We are all inclusive here for Trivia Night. Let's get our answers in fast. Where would you go to shoot a arrows at a 3D target? Lawfully. Where would you go to shoot arrows at a 3D target? Wiregrass Lake, Binview, Fort Miamis, or West Winds? Where would you go? Two, one, and we'll see how they landed. 30 of you guessed correctly. That's right, folks. West Winds, we are proud to have it. It is a popular space. Our programmers can teach you how to do this and they enjoy doing it. Next question. All right, Pity Pat. Excited to have you. Which of these is not a fact about turkey vultures and also a lyric from a camp song? Which of these is not a fact about turkey vultures? I don't need a nest to lay my eggs. I bathe in the mud to look like a stud. I'll throw up on you to scare you. When I get hot, I pee on my legs. In fairness, I think those are all lyrics to country songs, but get it in here, folks. They are yeah. definitely answers to uh, the camp songs, which thank you, Metro Parks. My daughter sings all the time. I'm a turkey vulture. All right, turkey vultures, terrifying creatures, folks, but they do make for good song lyrics. We are learning here. That's all we can do. Next question. How about that band? Which of these park animals has 50 teeth, the most of any land mammal in North America? A Virginia possum, a possum, raccoon, striped skunk, or coyote? Which of these park animals has 50 teeth? Counted them all myself, Shannon, just in preparation for this trivia game. Let's get those I'm in. I'm glad you did, because as we all know, I'm terrified of dinosaurs because of how many teeth they have. That is something we all know now. All right, a possum has got it. 31 people knew that. How about that 50 teeth? I don't even know how many teeth I have. but I And bet here we are, something now that will terrify me every day. Crocodiles, opossums, and dinosaurs, sharks for their teeth. With 50 teeth and a small brain, opossums are a primitive species. How about that? One opossum can eat up to 5,000 ticks a year. Well, now he's my best friend again. Their low body temperature makes contracting rabies extremely rare, so let's not worry about that with them. And as the only marsupial in North America, females carry their young in a pouch like marsupials do. All right, 50 teeth and a small brain, I can relate. <laughs> and we are back to our leaderboard. How did we do on that? I wonder who the fastest was. And White Oak again. Joe Dog, Native Plants Are Us, Bald Eagle. And look at that, Matt. Mark from the park is making a comeback. I'll tell you what, Shannon, I'm going to sweeten the pot here. Fourth place gets a Virginia possum dropped off at their house this evening. Do you like possums, folks? Probably not, but you can win one if you're in fourth place. They're coming to your house tonight. Look out, garbage cans everywhere. 50 teeth in action. Although they are generally solitary, what is a group of owls called? We had to ask them ourselves, although they are generally solitary, what is a group of owls called? A gaggle, a rafter, a cast, or a parliament? Gaggle, rafter, cast, or parliament? 21 of you are absolutely right, a parliament. That is the correct answer. How about that? I was unaware of that. A group of owls, now I know. I'm doing some learning here, folks. I hope you're having some fun. Which type of clothing is not advised to wear when paddling, as it will not keep you warm if you get wet? This will get you wet if you're wearing it. What is the answer? Is it wool, neoprene, cotton, or polyester? First time I'm seeing neoprene in print, folks, and I said I think spectacularly. Wool, neoprene, cotton, polyester. Which one is a no? 31 of you are right with cotton. Good for you, people who are experienced paddlers. Uh, Metro Parks has an award-winning paddling program we're very proud of. Whoa, how about that? Thank you to this intern. They were out here for days to get this picture right, and it took all 40 days to get it right, folks. At a tree climbing program, you can learn to hang upside down as you climb. What is the animal related technique referred to as? That's a mouthful, folks. Easy for me to say because the blood isn't rushing to my head yet. But with my tiny brain, it's very manageable. At tree climbing programs, you can learn to hang upside down as you climb. What is this animal related technique referred to as? Spider style, bat hang, bat cling, or acrobat arborist? Get those answers in. Five seconds left, folks. That hang is right. We had one voter for spider style. That was a bit of a challenging one, I know, folks. But that hang is absolutely right. One of the fun programs from the Metro Parks. And back to our leaderboard, Matt. 
Oh, and White Oak again in as the fastest. Come on, folks, get those fingers typing and texting. Joe Dog, Native Plants Are Us, Mark from the Park, Pity Pat is back up there, and Bald Eagle. Look at that, Bad Bug Watcher and Yam Yam making a crawl up that leaderboard. Come on, folks, get texting and typing. ABCs is a common acronym used during cycling pre-ride checks. A stands for air, C stands for chain. What does B stand for? 10 seconds. Is it balance, bolts, brakes, or bells? Again, folks, we're looking for the B. Let's go, Mark. Let's go, Pat. We're climbing up here. We're looking for prizes. Get your answers in. 37 of you are spot on for brakes. Good for you. A stands for air, B is for brakes, C for chain. You gotta check those things to be safe, folks. What is the longest of the 11 National Scenic Trails stretching 4,600 miles from Vermont to North Dakota and passing through Lucas County? What is the longest of the 11 National Scenic Trails stretching 4,600 miles from Vermont to North Dakota and passing through Lucas County? This is a good important question, people. When polled, 80% of you want trails and we are proud to bring them to you the Metro Parks. The North County Trail is the right answer. This was a tough one, folks, and it was a hotly contested answering session here. 18 of you are right, 16 of you were Appalachian Trail with a close second, but unfortunately wrong. Next question, we're moving right along. We've got people bouncing all around the leaderboard. We've got a possum to give away. We've got 50 teeth to bring to your house. This park played a role in two different battles spaced over a decade of carts. Fort Miamis, Fallen Timbers Battlefield, Middle Grounds, or Providence. This park played a role in two different battles spaced over a decade. Notice Pearson is not here and none of you cared about it. No battles there. So maybe a good park to visit. 33 of you guessed Fallen Timbers. That is not right. We're going to have some shifting on a leaderboard, Shan. I can feel it. I know. It's exciting. It's so exciting. Fort Miamis in the Battle of Fallen Timbers in 1794 and the War of 1812. Much of the earthwork used to create the fort are still uh, visible. So as a National Historic Site, visitors can have their National Parks passport stamped at uh, actually at Fallen Timbers or at the Maumee Branch Library. So Fort Miamis definitely and it is undergoing some <laughs> improvements now. So if you have not been to Fort Miamis, I would make my way there. All right, Shan, thank you. That's right, folks. She's on this week to give us facts, and I'm here to barely give you the written word. Shan, and we're check back that to that leaderboard. Let's see who knew this one. And White Oak, look at that, Matt, with just one question, a sweep of the board, a yam yam coming in second. Joe Dog, Native Plants Are Us, Bald Eagle, and Jimmy B. Look at that. See, folks, keep playing. Just a few questions make a difference. All right, thank you, Shannon. We've got some climbing. The spring walleye run on the Mombi River is just winding down. What fish is now attracting anglers at side cut? What fish is now attracting anglers at side cut? Freshwater drum, bluegill, red snapper, or white bass? Thirty of you are right. White bass is the answer. That is bringing fishermen now that the walleye are at the end of the season. Let's get down there. Let's get fishing. Can't wait to have you. Which tree's wood is too dense to float in water? Too dense to float in water. Again, I can relate. Cottonwood, ironwood, shag bark, hickory, and sweet gum. Again, don't take my mispronunciation. It still could be the right answer. I can barely read. Cottonwood, ironwood, shag bark, hickory, and sweet gum. 30 of you, yes, I and 30 of you are right. Good for you. That one was a tough one for me, Shan. Did you know that one? It was a tough one. It was indeed. How about that? That's not patronizing at all, folks. Final question. Remember to join us for trivia every Thursday. And remember to hang on and keep playing. There's a grand prize at the end of this. The leader, after many weeks, wins the grand prize. The information is on your email here. Again, and we're I doubt it's that opossum you want to drop off at their houses. There's all kinds of things we could drop off at of their houses, Shannon. Let's get to that final question. You're tired of hearing my voice and I don't blame you. This insect is a leaf mimic. This insect is a leaf mimic. All right, folks, last question. A lot of movement in the leaderboard. Anyone can be a winner, Shannon. Anyone. <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. She's the best, guys. We're lucky to have her. Ant, 
Box Elder Bug, Katie did, or Spittle Bug. 10 seconds left. This is for all the marbles. We'll bring you an opossum with marbles. We want to serve you. All right, 33 of you are correct. What is that going to do the leaderboard, Shannon? I can't wait to find out. Bring us home here. Let us know who our big winner is. And the leaderboard is tallying, tallying, tallying. And we have, wait for it, wait for it. White Oak is our winner. Congratulations, right. White Oak. All right, folks, the answer is, though, we're all winners. Thank you for participating in Metro Parks Trivia. I hope you had fun. We have fun providing you fun entertainment and the break from what could be kind of a downtime. But we're going to be here every Thursday for handing out prizes. Shan's handing out real information. I'm handing out marginal entertainment. Join us every Thursday, 7 o'clock, right here from Burbank Park.